Coach Bart alone is making sure that Jackson State football team has enough receivers to get out there on the field and run that air raid offense in the manner in which they're looking to do this upcoming fall season. But guys, as I keep saying over and over again, every day go day, we're seeing somebody new that's coming into the program. So that lets me know there's going to be some strong competition out there on the field to find out who that top 11 is going to be that's going to start the game come this fall season. Guys, let's go ahead and get into who the next man is that just touched down into the Jack State Tigers football program. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not but positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. So without further ado, don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So we're going to go ahead and tap on in this thing and get straight to it. I know y'all like, Coach, what's your perspective on all of this? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Looking at everything that's going on here and checking out some of the depth charts, you know, I know folks get mad when you start talking about depth charts. But I had to go look at a few depth charts to get an understanding of exactly what they're looking to accomplish with bringing in all of these different athletes at the same positions. And yes, even though they're going to be interchangeable as far as with playing, in this instance, playing the X, the Y, or the Z, or playing uh, slot back, there's going to be a lot of different things that we're going to see, which is going to have us sitting back like, whoa, okay, they, they really put an offense in play here that's going to really uh, stretch teams' defenses, which is what they're looking to do, so that Things, doesn't be, things don't become so convoluted up there in that box with that seven to eight man that's in the box where they're, you know, they're, they're clogging up all of the different lanes that they may want to have for them to run the ball or better yet, clogging up things where those underneath routes that receivers like to run, they're not available to the quarterback to throw. But this is what I'm seeing here. I'm looking at a young man that's coming into this program who definitely will, he, he, will, he, will, he will provide some action right away for Jackson State. Young man I'm talking about is none other than Rico Powers. Six foot two, 187 pounds, wide receiver, four-star recruit, three-sport athlete, played football, basketball, and track. He attended Benedictine High School in Savannah before coming up to Atlanta, Georgia to play at Hateville Charter, his senior high school. Shout out to Coach Pope over there at Hateville Charter. He is the defensive coordinator over there to the champion uh, Hateville Charter High School. Yes, they won a championship, I think it was a couple of years ago, and they've been making, they've had a strong presence in the playoffs ever since they won that championship. They really have been getting after it. So salute to them and building that program up and doing the great things that they're doing with those young men over there. But the young man that we're talking about is Rico Powers. This young man can flat out get after it out there on the football field. Now looking at some of his old film, you can see this young man's ability to break on passes to get himself open for quarterbacks to make precise throws to him out there on the field. This young man is able to use the track speed that he has along with times having to catch the ball at his highest point, making sure that he's able to secure the pass to bring it down to continue to keep those chains moving. Not only that, he doesn't let balls get into his body. He has the tendency of kicking in that extra gear to run up underneath passes to continue to keep running down the field. If I'm not mistaken, with him being over there at Hayville Charter, boy, there's a couple of passes that was thrown out there to him. I think he might still be running. He just took took a, a, a pit stop over in South Carolina just to see how that, that operation over there with their organization was going to run for him before him deciding that, hey, let me go ahead and bolt myself back on over here somewhere else where I can really put my talents out here on the field. Because you got to understand one thing. I looked at South Carolina University's depth chart from the receiver's room. Do you really think this young man had an opportunity to really touch down on the field? No, but this young man did play as a true freshman. He played in nine out of the 10 games in which he caught two passes for 19 yards. Now, this past season, he did play in two games in which, though, you know, the play there was a lot more minimum than it was his freshman year. So if you're seeing your, your play time diminish, you have to ask yourself that question. Is there something that you're doing or is there a change that's happening within the program where I have to make a decision to take my talents elsewhere? And going back to players that decided that they wanted to go play for somebody else, looking at those uh, transfers that's coming out, uh, there were several wide receivers that decided to leave. So I'm just saying, th there's something going on there. So, yeah, I get Muschamp saying that, you know, hey, this guy, 
He's a speedster. He can really open up the field for the offense, you know, making sure that we're able to get the ball down the field and do the things that we need to do. Well, obviously it showed with his stats and his play on the field that he wasn't really used in that manner. And I'm sure Coach Bartoloni will do exactly that in this air raid offense, allowing him the opportunity to have passes thrown to him where he can make plays for the Tigers offense. Watching this young man run routes leads me to believe that he definitely could tear the top off a couple of defenses within the swag this upcoming season. Everything is going to be based on matchups. And I believe with these receivers that's coming into the Jack State Tigers football program, it's going to pose matchups for, it's going to pose matchups in different games where teams are going to be scouting for this group of receivers and you're going to end up seeing this group of receivers. So it's almost like, as I stated before in previous videos, Defensive coordinators and position coaches on the defense, they're going to need to make sure that they're keeping track of everybody that's touching down on the field and know what to expect from these players when they head out there looking to get that Jack State Tigers offense open and running. But guys, I got to say congratulations to Rico Powers on committing to Jack State University football team and definitely look forward to seeing him doing some phenomenal things this upcoming season. But until next time, be the one and lead.